Hey everybody, Mr. West here. It's just been a little while since I've uh, put some stuff up and been kind of busy doing other things. And uh, since the um, Experimental Airlines contest, I um, haven't really done much, but I uh, wanted to move forward on some ideas I've had. And this is one of them where I was trying to make the uh, Armin style foam board wing work as a uh, flying wing and ideally as a tapered wing while well, I I gave that up because it's really quite difficult it's doable it it takes a lot of uh, effort and uh, I don't know that it actually produces uh, a better flying bird tapered wing like a uh, say a Zephyr 2 or something like that your typical flying wings so this is a parallel this is a plank wing uh, two sections of uh, the arm and wing, so it's 30 inches. And then I've used the full panel, which is 20 inches wide um, by 30 inches long. So I essentially I fold that in half. So an inside number for those of you that are building this wing, the, the mark is from the trailing edge. Uh, an uncut panel or sheet is uh, nine and three quarter to the score line. And that's the bottom deck of the inside of the bottom of the wing and then the uh, paper is then removed from that nine and three quarter mark score all across the top so the whole top inside is removed so that's a reference point there and then I use the uh, the one-third uh, position uh, for centering the spar and uh, and all of my buildup and so forth in there I also take off a square, excuse me, score off one inch of paper off the trailing edge inside, and that's what I do is uh, I taper on the inside. Anyway, so more back on to this bird. That was just a reference on this full. I'm using the full sheet on the wing, uh, so it's, it ends up being about a nine and a half inch uh, cord. And again, this is a plank, just cut uh, at the center. Uh, on the degree angles that you want. In this case, what I've done is a little bit, a little bit different. That was one of my fishing pole sections. I want to show you guys too. Um, this is a 15 degree. Most wings are done in a 25, 35 ish uh, degree angle in the center section. And um, I had other ideas when I cut the 15. And uh, I was thinking about a body section in the center that um, was actually a piece of wing panel and then cut 15 degrees on each of those so it would equal 30 degrees on the two main wings with a, a body, a wing body in the, section, in the middle section which didn't afford me anything positive other than it looked cool. Um, so like the blunt nose Zephyr, it looks a little bit like that in the center section and uh, except that it's not a parallel center section mine had tapered 15 degree angle cuts so a 15 degree angle on the left the center section is 15 and the right side is 15 and then the swing panel is 15 degree cuts and that equals 30 uh, roughly 30 and with all the you know the um, the fine uh, mistake or if you will miss miscalculation with the saw and everything or uh, I use a chop saw it ended up being about 32 degrees of angle uh, based on a sweep anyway so back to what I did here I did a 15 degree uh, sweep which ends up being seven and a quarter in inches of uh, I shouldn't say sweep 15 degree angle and a seven and a quarter sweep at a 53 inch wide wingspan so I get 53 inches off of these two 30 inch panels uh, so outside to outside is 53 and um, 3 8 approximately with those uh, coroplast uh, plastic signboard uh, wing tips so I had some of that lying around I said you know what I'll just use that um, I did that and I also made a skid on the uh, the fuse under the nose there to keep it off the ground. Let me demonstrate that on the ground. So with those tip skids like that, the nose will just want to plow right in. If you're 
if you're dealing with grass or or even gravel or whatever the the chin there of that tube which is a um, a shipping tube that I acquired from uh, um, like a mailbox uh, supply mailbox etc is one of them here in the in the uh, California area um, any of your mailbox or UPS stores will have uh, shipping tubes and I've noticed that and I've said this before the local post office carries shipping tube as well but they are heavier thicker wall these are thinner cheaper lighter you definitely don't need the heavy thickness guaranteed do not need um, so this is a two inch uh, two inch section uh, or a two inch diameter tube and I've used the three inch uh, in the in the cardboard tube uh, and it's it's good too it's a little on the large side uh, for this scale so I thought this worked real well and all the uh, <clears throat> in fact all of the uh, four cell batteries fit real nice in there with a deck a deck a foam board deck underneath the battery to push pull it out of the tube uh, so there was no access holes cut into it other than the the front end and the back end and I'll show that here in a second let me get these off the table so I was real pleased with this um, with this layout I've got two inch wide uh, control surfaces, um, a nine and a half cord, two inches for control surfaces. And that's a uh, that's a uh, a helicopter motor that I have left over. Pretty sure. No, wait a minute. That's not my helicopter motor. This is a twenty-eight twenty-nine. Or excuse me, twenty-eight thirty-nine k with a uh, twenty-seven fifty kV uh, from FMS. And I'm not positive where I got this. It might have come out of a um, out of a 70 millimeter ducted fan. Very possible. In fact, I think that might be it. Um, or it was a heli motor. Can't remember. Anyway, and a decent sized speed controller of un unknown value. And I think it's at least 40, maybe 50. And it does well. It doesn't heat up too badly. I'm still going to work out profit. Uh, prop choices for this, optimum prop choices for this. And uh, so this is kind of a, uh, a finishing mock-up, if you will. Things are taped in place with the blue tape uh, in case they got to move. That's my uh, FM uh, receiver there with the antenna out to the to the wingtip. Got some of the uh, Dollar Tree uh, yellow duct tape on the tube. Um, Dollar Tree uh, cellophane tape the clear tape two inch wide over all of that and then I'm using inside of this a new uh, new material that I found I'm using um, a spar that runs as I said on the one-third CG line and then um, what that is is a uh, it's just under one quarter inch fiberglass tube that I picked up from uh, Big Lots and in California here it's called Big Lots um, Big Lots L-O-T-S and in their uh, home and garden section uh, which is seasonal they come in with all kinds of you know hand tools and things like that well anyways these uh, garden stakes I'll bring that into the picture now um, I was really amazed when I found it. Walmart has a garden stake of a larger diameter and there it is. Big Lots, $1.50, made in China. The company, uh, manufacturer company is there. Um, actually, you know what, it's distributed by Big Lots, Columbus, Ohio and you won't be able to necessarily find this. So here's the item number. Um, item number, actually let's use the SKU if you can see that right there. 145-2100-206129. Not a SKU, but a UPC. And the item number is the one above there. It's 210 Pretty sure those numbers will get you in the right. All right, so it's four feet long, and uh, it's amazingly rigid and true, and it is a tube. It has a hole down the center. Not that that 
helps. Anyway, as I was saying about uh, Walmart, is they have a, a garden stake also, but they're actually flexible. They're made with recycled plastic on the outside with a with a malleable steel, a soft steel core. And I thought, oh wow, this is great. Uh, it's about three inch diameter. I said, oh, this is perfect. So I grabbed a few of them. And I said, they're, and they're cheap too. They're only $1.97 or something like that. But uh, they bend and hold a shape. <laughs> so put them back on the shelf and left disappointed. Uh, and then I ran across these accidentally um, at our big lots here in Yucaipa, California is where I'm at. Um, so if any of you, actually here's a, here's a shout out to any of you that are in uh, the San Bernardino Redlands, Yucaipa, Mentone area in Southern California. Um, you ought to PM me a, a message and uh, maybe we can hook up and do some, uh, do some flying here on the local or field of choice. Anyway, back to the bird. Um, let me flip it over here. So two channel, right, using a delta configuration. This is the bottom. CG. Okay, so here's a real nifty tool I think I've mentioned before. Uh, so flying, here's, a, here's the link. It's a www.flyingwing. Forget the www's and the dots. Just Google this. Flying Wing CG Calculator. Okay? And uh, bookmark that page once you open it up. And this is a real quick, easy, completely easy to understand calculator strictly for flying wings. And you can even use them as a plank uh, wing, uh, a straight wing, like um, like all the birds that I build, uh, big you know big plank wings and no dihedral. And dihedral doesn't matter in this; it's not factored into the to the design. So all you do is decide uh, your wingspan, your cord at the tip. If you have tapered anything different than the the center cord. Um, so you have both of those cord numbers to put in, so this can be tapered. This is great for foam design uh, wings as well, so if you want a hot cut. Um, so this is going to help you find that CG, it'll help you find the, uh, the MAC lines, um, and just, just real sweet. Anyway, so go, go to that page, play with those, and you can print out just uh, within your browser um, page there, just go into File, Print, or uh, control P when you're on that page and uh, you'll be able to print uh, right to the printer there um, and or you can save and uh, go from there so you can come up with some designs and and just throw it in there um, just love the heck out of it so that's what I'm using here I plugged in 53 inches for wingspan 10 uh, I rounded it up to a 10 inch cord wing uh, tip and center line and then um, checked the sweep using the square and a, on, a, on a table and so forth to make sure that we're pretty close. And it came out within, uh, oh, about five thousandths of an inch, uh, excuse me, five tenths of an inch. Uh, so like 0.5 of an inch. Um, that's not right. Anyway, the number was 7.3 versus the estimated was uh, 7.25 so that's actually very very close um, and there was the first uh, flight free flight to the ground and and I think it'll it'll do all right so anyway um, yeah I love the heck out of this and I'm still shooting for for this thickness when I do uh, the 10 inch cord roughly I shoot for an overall thickness of an inch of an eight and an eighth uh, approximately uh, to an inch and a quarter sort of maximally there and then um, it seems to to fly cut the wind or uh, you know penetrate rather uh, rather nicely okay so we'll see a maiden flight with that today is a little bit um, today is just a little bit too windy for me um, the wind is cranking, got our summer breeze, summer wind coming through, and it's not uh, friendly for maidens. Alright, so update on the fishing pole uh, find. 
if you will, from Walmart. So I had um, I had mentioned had had mentioned at Walmart here in California. Uh, there's this three-piece uh, telescoping uh, single uh, pole, um, like a bait cast pole or a uh, you know dangle pole, where you're just tossing the line only. It doesn't have a, a, a mount for a reel and a handle and all that business. It's essentially your uh, improved. Uh, bamboo poles. You know, you've seen bamboo bank poles. Well, this is a this is a bank pole, if you will, uh, that's done in fiberglass. And I was just freaking thrilled when I found it. And for the price, it ends up being like eight bucks um, out the door, uh, less than ten dollars. And you get three sections of fiberglass. Um, honestly, I don't know what the tip section will be good for. Um, it's it is very flexible too flexible in my mind but the mid and the base section are perfect for um, booms like a single boom uh, the mid section is good for twin boom and that you could use the uh, the bigger lower section for twin booms as well but it's it's pretty beefy um, not in thickness but it just in diameter it's a little it's a little large and for a nice lightweight, the um, the midsection over here on this side will do really, really well. These fiberglass units will not work, in my opinion, for booms because they are too flexible for that. But when these are hot glued down and sandwiched in uh, in a nice arm and um, wing construction, they add a ton of rigidity um, to the wing. Um, also, and what I did is I took a cut section and did the typical diagonal brace. Uh, as wide as I could um, across the midsection there. So the the main spars come together, meet in the center, that's all hot glued. And then I did a diagonal brace 90 to the center line there and um, help stiffen up that center section, reinforce it rather. Okay, so that's probably about it. Fishing pole, uh, oh, so you had to strip them, right? The, uh, the bottom section, the bottom section had um, had some string uh, bracket down here at the bottom to anchor off your uh, your string, um, and that was all then uh, glassed on to the pole, and it came off really super easy. All I did is I took a utility knife, laid it flat to the pole, and just cut right through all of it, and peeled it off, and it came off fairly uh, in one piece. And uh, so I thought that was pretty slick. And there was, I think there was two, two sets of those or something like that. And there, anyway, you'll see it. There's some decorative stuff in the middle. Um, anyway, so all of that came off and came off with nice light sandpaper, like a 100 grit first. And then I got it down to uh, 220 to smooth that out. And then I threw on a matte finish uh, black on the mids or the base section there. And uh, all all turned out really well. Great investment, and I bought. I went ahead and bought another one of these. So I have two sets that are stripped and ready to go. And uh, so here here's kind of the plan for that. I'm thinking is um, a lightweight version of my FB drone to uh, increase distance uh, performance and um, efficiency, flight efficiency. All right. So uh, there's a a little update. From, uh, from Mr. West. Let me zoom in here on this. There you go. She's not the prettiest, but none of them really are pretty. These are very practical, functional uh, drones. And right now I have the, uh, I have in the nose the, um, the uh, bloggy cam, the one that I'm using right now, uh, will sit on top. It does not fit inside the tube, unfortunately. Um, if you went with a 3 inch, it would fit inside. You could certainly do a 3 inch and that would work too. Um, that tube started out as an 18 inch section, for your information. And uh, I'll, uh, if you ask some questions in the post, I'll, uh, uh, in the comment section, uh, about specs and so forth, I can get a little more detailed. Send me a private message. Uh, private messages always work best because uh, I tend to get a little, a little wordy, if you will, or 
in depth I like to say okay so thanks again for listening watching and posting comments sharing your ideas comments criticisms West out